bidirectional controls is a feature of our scan tool software that affords us as diagnosticians and technicians the opportunity to stress or exercise different components that make up the systems we find on vehicles across the board. Stick with me on this episode of The Trainer and find out why crankshaft angle variation relearn procedure is such an important bi-directional control. As mentioned previously, the bi-directional controls save us a tremendous amount of time. Being able to push a button on a scan tool and see a component within a system function tells us a heck of a lot about the system itself. For instance, pressing a button and having an output like a power window motor actuate shows us the integrity of the circuitry from the fuse box to the power window through the appropriate modules driving that command as well as the path back to ground. In a nutshell, what it's really doing is giving us the opportunity to also see that perhaps the fault isn't on the output side of the system, yet inferring that the fault may be on the input or processing side of the system. What am I getting at? Bidirectional controls are a crucial part of a technician and diagnostician's needs to remain efficient in the workshop from the day to day. But there's one bidirectional control that many technicians take for granted and that is the crankshaft position sensor signal variation relearn procedure. The crankshaft position sensor signal or crank angle relearn procedure is carried out via the scan tool as a command to the PCM. By selecting the option or pressing the button if you will, you are sending a signal to the PCM commanding it to learn. This is important because components that make up the engine, the mechanical components like the crankshaft, the connecting rod, the piston and rings, the wrist pins, all the components that make up the rotating mass of that engine have a certain amount of mass or weight to them. The point being that these components, although nearly identical, are in fact slightly different from one cylinder to the next and when you and I as technicians perform repairs that require replacement of these engine internals, if you will, those variations that are introduced to the engine have not been learned by the PCM. By replacing components, as I just mentioned before, as well as other electronic components like the crankshaft position sensor and or the powertrain control module or engine control module, dependent upon configuration, without telling that computer that these components are replaced, the computer is relying on the variations in crankshaft speed from the original components. And when it sees these variations that are simply occurring due to new components being replaced, the PCM or ECM will initiate an indicator for misfires, whether that's a DTC a check engine light that's illuminated, or a flashing MIL. The point being is when a technician encounters a situation like this and is not yet aware that components were previously replaced, this is where technicians get sidelined, derailed, and sent on a wild goose chase. As you can see by this diagram here, crankshaft rotational speed, otherwise stated, crankshaft position sensor signal reluctor tooth frequency is plotted over time. And as each one of the engine's cylinders experiences a successful combustion event, for a moment in time the rotational speed of the crankshaft is increased due to the combustion taking place upon the piston and rod assembly that is rotating it. This happens over and over again as each consecutive cylinder experiences a successful combustion event. However, when one cylinder does not experience a successful combustion event for any reason, give it an inaccurate air fuel ratio, an insignificant or insufficient spark or a spark delivered at the wrong time, or even engine mechanical integrity failures, any one of those faults could cause a momentary decrease in crankshaft rotational speed. 
And since the PCM is programmed to know the engine configuration, meaning how many cylinders and the firing order, and it is monitoring the position of cylinder number one top dead center compression event, the PCM has no problem determining which cylinder is at fault, meaning which faulty cylinder is contributing to the lack of rotational speed increase from the crankshaft. Now, introducing new components introduces a momentary slowdown or perhaps an increase in speed if those components weigh less. As a result, since the PCM was not told these components were replaced, it could mistake that for a misfire or multiple misfires across multiple cylinders. And it's for that reason we have to perform the crankshaft position sensor or crank angle sensor variation relearn procedure. As you can see here, it's quite simple. In many cases, it requires nothing but a button push and following some simple on-screen instructions on how to carry out that procedure. Many times it requires an increase in engine speed simply by opening up the throttle when the engine is not under load, meaning whether the transmission is in park or neutral. We open up the throttle to increase the rotational speed of the crankshaft and upon throttle closing and engine speed decelerating, the PCM monitors for these variations in crankshaft position sensor signal frequency. And what the PCM determines as the results of that crankshaft wind down event, the variations in crankshaft signal frequency are considered normal. And the PCM logs that in its memory bank, in fact, as normal. Meaning any other variations in crankshaft speed will be flagged as misfires accurately. So as you can see, the crank angle or crank position sensor signal variation relearn procedure, although it appears to be nothing more than a button push on our scan tool, it does a lot more for our PCM to make accurate decisions about the health of each one of the cylinders that make up the engine powering the vehicle down the road. I'm Brandon Steckler, Tech Editor Motor Age Magazine, and I thank you for joining me on this episode of The Trainer.